Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security advice along the way. I'm your host, security nerd, and proud Seahawks fan, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting February 3rd, 2014. So now that the Seahawks have won the Super Bowl, bringing the coveted Lombardi Trophy to the Emerald City of Seattle, I can now focus a bit more on security. So let's dive right into this week's news, talking about the obligatory warning about next week's Microsoft Patch Day. As happens on the second Tuesday of every month, next week is Patch Tuesday. Microsoft says it's going to be a pretty light one. They're going to release five updates that fix two critical flaws affecting mostly Windows, but also one of Microsoft's security products. So if you're a Microsoft administrator, be sure to check that out. Now do note that Adobe usually shares Patch Day, but one of the big topics of news this week is a zero-day flash vulnerability which Adobe fixed. If you follow the blog, you know that Adobe released an update Update to Flash Player that fixed a, a very unspecified vulnerability in Flash that attackers are leveraging in the wild right now to gain access to networks. So if you use Flash, be sure to go patch that now. Now I don't know if Adobe will release any other updates on Tuesday, but I'll keep my eye out. Now, while we're talking about this flash flaw, there's actually some rumors that the flaw is related to a new APT attack that's going to be disclosed in full very soon by one of our security partners, Kaspersky. They found apparently a new advanced persistent threat campaign that they call the mask. Now Kaspersky hasn't shared a ton of details, but we do know that the attack comes as a Microsoft Office document which uh, contains some embedded shockwave or flash content. And if you get infected with the particular piece of malware, it uses a boot kit which makes it hard to remove from your computer, as well as a root kit that makes it hard to detect on your computer or network. So it seems like a very advanced advanced attack, and we can expect Kaspersky to talk more about this in a conference that's coming up next week. So stay tuned, I'll probably talk about it next week as well. Another interesting story from the week is a watering hole attack affecting a very popular site on the internet. About three weeks ago, a security company called Invincio warned uh, the site called Daily Motion, which is a, a video sharing site very similar to YouTube, that it was actually serving malicious ads. And these malicious ads were redirecting Daily Motion visitors to pop up windows which could get their computer infected by fake antivirus products. And the big story this week is Daily Motion is still infected with these malicious ads. Invincio says they've warned Daily Motion motion again three weeks after first informing them about this, this infected iframe attack, and Daily Motion still hasn't responded to it. In fact, Invincia even put up a video showing the attack. So this perfectly illustrates a watering hole attack, which is where attackers find flaws in a very popular site. And by the way, apparently Daily Motion is the 96th most popular site on the internet. And then they leverage flaws in that site to infect uh, the site with drive-by download type attacks. So if you are a site owner, keep in mind that ads are one way the, these bad guys will get uh, malicious content onto your site. Often you allow ad companies to put whatever ads or code they want on your particular site by using these ad frameworks. And bad guys can often put malicious ads into these ad frameworks as well. So if you're a site owner, be sure to follow good coding practices like the ones mentioned on OWASP and be careful where you get your ads from. Moving on, other top news from the week is a story about yet another retailer targeting RAM scraping Trojan. This one's called Chewbacca. During the week, the RSA security company released some details about a new Trojan they found called Chewbacca. And apparently this Trojan has affected retailers in 11 different countries. Now it's actually not a super advanced Trojan. Uh, basically, if you get infected by it, it will do things such as scraping your RAM to see if it can can find credit card information using a very basic Perl regular expression and then sharing that credit card information with an attacker. And it also uses a traditional
traditional keylogger. And the reason they call it a Chewbacca Trojan is uh, they actually found some of its command and control servers, and it has a big picture of Chewbacca. Now, in reality, this isn't too advanced malware. It's not really that interesting, but it is further proof that the bad guys are targeting retailers and the information they store. So if you take any sort of credit card information, you might think about uh, battening down your hatches. And one of the things you can do is start to implement data loss protection technologies. There's a lot of technologies out there, including stuff that WatchGuard sells, that can actually scan all your network traffic looking for credit card and magnetic stripe information. So it can at least try to detect this information as it might leak outside your perimeter. So you might want to consider that if you're a retailer. Now the final and biggest story this week is yet another update on the big target breach. In another Brian Krebs security scoop, the journalist lets us know that it turns out the target breach, at least in part, was due to a credential leak from one of Target's third-party subcontractors. Apparently Target uses a company called Fazio Mechanical Services to provide heating and refrigeration or HVAC support for the Target company. And this particular contractor or Target partner had network access to Target systems. At first they thought they had network access in order to gain control of maybe some of the HVAC systems for maintenance. But in a, a more recent update, Krebs actually says that it turns out they had access to Target's network for billing purposes and stuff like that. In any case, the FBI and Target suspect that the attackers gain access to this uh, HVAC company's credentials and use these credentials to, to get their way or their foot in the door of Target's network. And by the way, this is a perfect example of one of my predictions for 2014, which was expect more chain of trust attacks. And by chain of trust attack, I mean an attack where a bad guy has to first attack a secondary or tertiary target in order to gain access to some sort of asset they need to get into the real target itself. So in this case, it's gaining access to the subcontractor's credentials in order to gain access to the target's network. It's also a perfect example of why you should further segment your trusted network. One of my common security tips is as a industry, many people don't segment their trusted network. They have a relatively flat trusted network. Whether it's someone in accounting or engineering or tech support, everyone has network access to all your company's resources. This is really not how your network should be. Even though these are your trusted users, you should have further segmentation between different priority levels of resources. For instance, why should an engineer have access to your accounting servers? Or why should your accountants have access to your engineer's source code? If you put up more network roadblocks and more access control perimeters between these different networks, it makes it harder for bad guys to do lateral movement even if they gain access to some person in, within your trusted network. So in this specific case, if there is more segmentation between the HVAC subcontractors billing computers, which they had remote access to and the actual point of sale network, it would make it a little bit harder for attackers to do lateral movement, though not impossible. Anyways, it's an interesting update around the target breach. Of course, we'll continue to follow the story. And if you haven't already read about it, be sure to check out our blog post about this particular target breach and everything we know about it so far. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, there's a lot of other security news, so be sure to check out the reference section with the blog post associated with this video. And on the topic of security, this week HelpNet Security published an article I wrote talking about drive-by download and watering hole attacks. In fact, one's very similar to the, what happened to Daily Motion this week. So be sure to check that out on the blog as well, where you can always find interesting security stories. Besides that, you can also follow me on Twitter, I'm at SecAdept, or follow WatchGuard at WatchGuardTech. Finally, to celebrate Seattle's Super Bowl win, I made a quick time-lapse video from WatchGuard's offices showing the Seahawks Super Bowl parade. If you're interested in that, be sure to stay till after the credits. As always, thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.